Hello, I'm Luke Catford. You join me and Lewis Cox, our Shrewsbury Town correspondent. We're here at the Meadow Lewis where it has been bucketing it down yep. all day long, ever since we got here. Um, but it didn't look like it was going to be a gloomy day for Shrewsbury Town, <laughs> did it? Uh, they went a goal up. Nice and they segue. Looked, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a good one. I was thinking that up. Um, yeah, they went a goal up. Um, they looked like they were going to hold on for th all three points and then in typical town fashion. Um, just, yeah. just pegged back right at the end uh, and is a real demoralising one, isn't it? Yeah, desperate one uh, today, really. Well, I suppose not desperate. They haven't lost the game, of course. They've, they've drawn, uh, drawn one, one all against, mm. uh, against Chillingham here at the Meadow. Uh, but like you say, a game that you know was within a whisker of taking all three points. The, the win was there from them. You know, take a take a 12th minute lead early on through through Brad Walker. Town of the better team in the first half. Comfortably, really, deservedly lead 1-0 at half-time. For whatever reason, I mean, Sam Ricketts has, has given his, his reasons there, their post-match, but they, they just could not follow that up in the second half mm. with a similar similar performance. They couldn't do the things that were were allowing them to be on top against Gillingham and the way Gillingham were playing, very direct, very long to big lads, um, was just allowing Gillingham a bit more of the ball, a bit more of the territory. They're just getting at town and town retreating, town looked like they were tiring. We'll get onto the fitness and injury situation. Mm -hmm. Manager saying, you know, very little options. He said to me, he feels like he's got a one hand tied behind his back. Yeah. Um, yet, for all of that, in the second half, there was probably only Gillingham's shot cleared off the line by their own man, <laughs> which was pretty spectacular. You know, one striker being poleaxed by the ball on the goal line to deny his, his mate. Um, that, that was all Gillingham forced really for mm. all of their balls in the box you know I just chatted with Scott Goldborn down there he's called it almost percentage football you know lump as many in the box and one of you one of them is going to drop for for Steve Evans' side and, and obviously one did in the 94th minute four four of seven minutes added on mm. and it's Jordan Graham um, you know someone Sam Ricketts will know very well former Wolves winger sweeps home emphatically um, after a long throw throw isn't cleared and it's it's uh, it's a real gut wrencher, really, isn't it? It's a real hammer blow because you know, time a couple of minutes of added time away from that first league win of the season at the fourth attempt, obviously, goes on now. Four, you know, four games in without a win, three three draws and a and a defeat. Yeah, that's right. So three points from the first twelve. It's not ideal. Obviously, it's not ideal mm. to start the campaign with you know, winless in four. And, and today is particularly galling because they were so close. You know, to you know, it's a tough. Horrible conditions, conditions that probably suit Gillingham. Mm. You know, tough injury and health-related situation um, for town. Really, you know, scant options. Uh, but they were so close from from getting, you know, a, what would would have been a solid victory over the line and, and getting underway for the season. Really, instead, it's just frustration. Yeah, it is frustration, and and as you said, Sam Ricketts is dealing with a, a lengthy injury list. Yeah, and. He said that's it's it's not just injuries, is it? No, no. Um, so firstly, I mean, obviously, Sean Worley limps off towards the end of the first half. Started the game well. Obviously, a, a really key attacker for Town. Um, started the game well, as I say, his corner for Brad Walker's header. But he limps off. Think it's a calf calf problem there. Another muscle injury. Like I say, the injury list just seems to be just getting, you know, you get a couple back, one back mm. and another one goes. And so obviously the Wally there, you know, muscle, calf muscle, he's, you know, best case scenario, could be a couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, the manager said there was a couple of COVID um, issues, a couple of coronavirus situation mm. uh, within the town camp. He didn't name names, so, you know, we can't speculate on, on that health situation, obviously, but, you know, clearly... There were lads missing today unexpectedly uh, from the 18. Roshan Williams wasn't involved. Mm. Daniel Udo wasn't involved, who, who aren't, don't have injuries. So, um, obviously, a case there where the club just have to, to wait and discover the situation there, just in terms of uh, uh, COVID. Um, but, you know, it doesn't help, does it? You no. know, when you, you know, I think Sam Ricketts planned for today with, with those two. You know, in his in his squad, uh, two key players, and obviously that that's that's gone the way it has. The you know the Sean Wally one's another blow. Mm. Um, Harry Bergoyne had to you know came in today, played his uh, full league debut. You know you got Ryan Barnett starting in the front three. Yeah, his his full league debut. So is the 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 injury situation. Surprised to see the likes of Jason Cummings come out and and, and be on the bench mm. alongside Scott High, who was on the bench as well. Um, a lot of talk you know amongst town fans about you know. 
all right, there was the Wally sub injury in the first half, but then there's no change until the 80th minute when, when yeah. the, the next sub is made and, and they only made two. So It was you know, a tough one to call that, though, I thought, because they were they were holding Gillingham yeah. pretty much at arm's yeah. length. And, and Sam Ricketts has said, you know, it, it sounds a little bit obvious, but, you know, we he said just didn't have the personnel, the right personnel on the bench to bring on and, and halt Gillingham's threat. In, yeah. in essence, didn't have big lads on the bench they could bring on to come in and win the headers, win the second balls from, from, the, from the long balls. That, that is what he said. Uh, we didn't have the right personnel. Yes, you can bring on a Scott High for, for fresh legs, which he did with 10 minutes to go and Scott mm. High had to play out of position. But he said we were just lacking in, in the right options today to to, to try and um, repel a team like Gillingham and you know he, he was quite open there Sam in, in calling you know Gillingham direct and you know long ball and not an attractive watch which you know yeah, obviously they're still coming here and got a point today but maybe maybe you could say town have to learn lessons in terms of dealing with threats like that mm. learn lessons in um, continuing to play and be a, the better side once ahead because they've you know, Plymouth last week they led and were the better team and then came off it and lost control. You know, it happened again today, so lessons there. But and, and lessons to deal with other teams' threats, like I say, you know, you're not going to come across free flowing teams in this division too often. You're going to come across big, brutish teams like that and mm. you know, have to deal with them. But you, you know, you've got Ebanks Landell in the heart of defence who's you know, got a head injury, got a head headgear on, keeps going down with, with head problems, and it just. No, I think the manager, it's a fair assessment when he says it feels like we've got one hand tied behind you know, behind our back, especially when you add the COVID issues into it all. But look, listen, other teams have got injuries as well. It can't it can't be an excuse It's you know, to, to overlook uh, the winless run, which is a blow. And obviously they'll want to end that soon. They go to Doncaster next week and hope to have a few bodies back, but don't look like it at the moment, sadly. Yeah. Um, lastly, I mean, a lot of fans will have looked at the game and they'll have said, you know what's happened and they'll be obviously very naturally yeah. disappointed yeah a lot of but disappointment yeah. there was there were positives there to take one well, no, particularly yeah. first half because first half i mean town i mean particularly after the goal much about so absolutely yeah. bossed it, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah they just yeah. couldn't find that second that second goal and then i think it was more a matter of just creating the chances to score that second goal because they never really had another golden opportunity yeah. did they well as well as well as the first half performance you, you're totally right you know positives in terms of Burgoyne did, well, Sam Richards said Harry Burgoyne's done well in the very little he's had to do. Mm. Ryan Barnett, I thought that was an excellent full debut for the young lad. Fossey was good. Fossey was, was really good. You know, unfortunately, he got caught and, and ended up conceding for a throw in that led to the goal, but until that, he was excellent. Mm. Um, Leon Clark and Ollie Norman playing 90 minutes each. I mean, that was not in the plans, you know, to, to give them 90 minutes. We're very surprised to even see Leon Clark start, let alone play 90 minutes. Norban hasn't started since January. He's played 90. I mean, that, that really details to you. Yeah, I suppose it's easy to say, well, I'll bring them off, but it's circumstance, isn't it? It's, is the right player there to, yeah. to come on for them sort of thing. Um, so, so they're positive to get 90 minutes into them. The first half performance was good, like you say. Um, I remember Josh Feller from distance drawing yeah. a decent save. Second half, uh, we talked about Gillingham having, you know, clearing one off their own line. Well, you know, Pierre's had one cleared off the line, which would have been 2 0 game over. Um, so, yeah, you know, the, within the performance there are, but, the, you know, there are also elements like not being able to put games away mm. not being able to you know no one expects to control a game for 90 minutes but not being able to take um the spells they have at the start of games and, and when they get ahead not being able to to prolong them and and, and you know you maybe see a bit of experience game intelligence to see games out uh, not being able to deal with different threats obviously with the likes of what um chilling and pose today so mm. yeah those sort of things to work on and, and cross your fingers really in terms of uh, getting players back and fit because I don't know if they've walked under a ladder or something but they are having some bad luck um, you know it, muscle injuries is it is it a problem in training who knows you know who knows the manager doesn't seem to think so so you know fingers crossed cause it's not easy next week trip up to up to Yorkshire and Doncaster um, mm. that's not an easy one at all to go and get your first first victory obviously they have an EFL trophy game here on Tuesday night against Bolton of the division below which you know you'd expect them to win and might be good to to give runs out to, to lads who didn't play today you know mm. to get the likes of coming sharp again 
and and whatnot but just yeah i can understand the supporters frustration you know because it feels like there was um sort of momentum and confidence in terms of going into a new season with a new shape new ethos you know being more attacking going for it um some exciting new signings you know on the face of it yet you know a few games in and, and they haven't won yet and you know i suppose from a supporters point of view they're seeing concerning traits that they've seen in, in mm. season or two gone by so that you know I'm just hoping I think Sam Ricketts summed it up they, they just need that first result or that first sort of moment or performance to kick start them and mm. you know and, and it'd be ideal to get a, you know what he considers a strong 11 out as well because obviously they're, they're suffering there so fingers crossed it can pick up but yeah it's a tough one today it feels really tough today yeah, so Shrewsbury Town still waiting for that first league win of the season. For all the post-match reaction, you know where to go. Shopshastar.com.